fascinating to me. Um, I read your novel, which was great, and I'm going to recommend that to everybody. And I read um, two of your essays, um, the one about Stephen Rosen and the other one um, on the paradox of language and the one on, um, what was it? I can't remember the title of it, but there's a lot of material in there. So, um, and Doug, I don't know, you, you, I don't know if you've read any of Lisa's stuff yet. We haven't posted it on the, on the website. No, I, I mentioned to you that I, I was intrigued by what, uh, well, you've, you've basically glorified Lisa here. So <laughs> I had to go and uh, find out what it's all about. But I, I did get the, my second official Kindle book with the one that is both, um, and I'm, I'm working my way through that over the course of the week so far. And I enjoy it. I really like your, your dialogue skills are very interesting to me. Um, and then I oh. found out later from John that you write your own plays or have at least taken a dive into that. So it's, yeah, um, I can see the relation there. But. I haven't cool. gotten far enough in the book to actually discuss it, but um, yeah, have like you, it. have you, either of you been to the website? I have. Okay. And I, I listened to your interview with Stephen and I listened to your interview with Lynn Clare and, uh -huh. I, and I got her book. Uh, the one she did with Luke Kaufman. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, I I just wanted to, um, I guess the best thing, let, I don't know exactly how to start. Maybe we should start with a clean start, okay? Um, okay. So I'm going to ask you for this, um, this session this evening to be really valuable for you. This session will be like what? So we start with you, Lisa? Fireworks. 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 <laughs> and for this session to be like fireworks, you will be like what? A match. <laughs> A match. And when this session is like fireworks and you are like a match, um, what kind of support do you need for that to happen? Dynamite. Dynamite. That's you guys. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Um, Doug, for this session to be really valuable for you, this session will be like what? Um. So, so as the tech guy, I suppose, which I'm not at all, <laughs> I'm just managing this, but um, I'd like to see myself as kind of the participatory cameraman. Ah, participatory Maybe. cameraman. And what support do you need from us so that you can be a participatory cameraman. So I, I see you two as the 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 two in the, the hot seat, the interviewer and the interviewee possibly, um, though it is up for grabs and it might be fireworks. Um, but it would be nice to, as the cameraman, to participate. So I might I might politely butt in and say, hey, let's I'd like to talk about this. So Please be, op be open and uh, willing to accept a, a wild cameraman, I suppose. Cool. Or an unorthodox cameraman. An unorthodox cameraman. Okay. <laughs> I just saw um, I saw some footage of you know Catherine Hay Hepburn, the late Catherine Hepburn. I don't know if you know her, Doug. She was a famous actress at one time, but she was uh, being interviewed by uh, Dick Cavett. And it was the cameras were rolling before the interview and she was coming in and bossing everyone around. She was like sitting down the chair and she was putting her feet up on the, on the, on the little uh, coffee table there and the coffee table wobble. And she says, come someone nail this down, you know? Oh, and someone put a rug over there. That's a horrible color. You know, <laughs> I'm going to have a background over here. It was just really great to see her because you're always so used to seeing her on stage or on a movie or 
you know, uh, or an interview, it's sort of, it was fun to see her off stage and to being very, uh, very much the, in control of everything around her. Um, and I don't know about Dick Cavett, but he's sort of a bumbling kind of guy, but he did sort of charm her considerably to do that interview. Um, but what I'd like to do, he I don't want to- He gave address at my college. He did? Yeah. Um in 1985 for the 100th anniversary and okay so I went to an all-women's college Bryn Mawr. and I went to Bryn Mawr and she came in and she told all of us to get married <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny uh, so she wasn't so liberated after all <laughs> that's hilarious um, so I guess my I guess my, I guess my thing is I, I sort of was thinking about myself as a stage manager, someone who's um, backstage and on stage sort of, um, or he's coordinating what's going on backstage, and uh, he's able to communicate um, who's whose cue is you know when when the lighting cue is ready and when the set is ready or when the set needs to be removed and when the curtain goes up, that kind of thing. Um, I've never been an assistant director. Uh, I've almost always been on stage, or I've I have directed on occasion. Um, but I've always liked that. But that's what I feel most comfortable, you know, when I'm in, in sort of that, that stage management role. Um, so anyway, so as we're, um, I was, let me just go over a few of my notes, and maybe we could um, pick out some themes that are really, um, would interest all of us. And um, then maybe we could do a little exercise working with clean language around um, a resource that we would like to develop. Um, and it would be nice if we could all agree on what resource we all want to develop. I was thinking of like collaboration when I'm collaborating at my best or when I'm communicating at my best. We've worked, worked on writing before uh, or, when, or intuiting. So um, we could agree among ourselves what is a resource that would be really valuable for us to develop, either one that we have or that we want to get better at. And, um, and the reason I was think, thinking communication, when I'm communicating at my best, might be a fun resource to develop is because there's so much of your work which is about this. Um, I notice you're, you, you're talking, um, I'm just going to quote you if you don't mind. If language is the container of our thoughts, then I suggest we pour it into, we do not pour it into old wine bottles, but into a Klein bottle, metaphorically speaking, a structure that requires four dimensional for it to fold back into itself without intersecting itself. It embodies a paradox, a two dimensional representation of a three dimensional object that requires four dimensional space. So I find that very fascinating. Um, and I'm really interested in um, going into that observer mode. Uh, in your interview with Stephen, he talks about a group proprioception. Well, he was talking about proprioception. Mm -hmm. uh, you, we're in that subject object kind of uh, separation. And you know the, the object is over there and I'm the subject having the knowledge about that object. And that is so hardwired in us. And what happens when we start to turn it around, our attention to the observer? And I think Stephen and you were discussing how he talked about the, the intellect, the emotions, and the gut. Mm -hmm. And that interplay and um, he uses uh, topology, to topological figures, um, as, as analogs. Um, and that's a really fascinating. And I'm curious about this because um, I believe clean language is um, another way of working with that kind of um, mystery, actually. Um, and, and another... Another quote, one more quote. In order to speak from the depth dimension, 
And I think that's uh, what you and Stephen identified as the depth dimension when you where there isn't a distinction between subject and object, where subject and object flow into one another, that, yeah. Right, and uh, I think the, the Klein bottle is uh, an example of that uh, mysterious kind of, it's an object that's, uh, that breaks down the inside-outside dichotomy, correct? Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. So it's self-referential. It's, self, it's self-referential. Mm -hmm. right. um, so one more, in order to speak from the depth dimension and not speak about it, Western cultures will need to make important shifts in category structure to embrace and live in paradox, given our cultural abhorrence of it, might be uncomfortable, even terrifying at first. So I really like those quotes. Do you have a question? Um, I guess, I guess, how are we going to go about making this happen? Um, how do we speak? You, 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 you caution us rather than speaking about it, which is sort of taking a, a meta perspective. How do we speak from it? And I remember you asked that question in your workshop at the Gebser Society. And when you asked, um, how do you speak from an integral awareness? I just blurted out, it's a Klein bottle. It's like being in the hold of a Klein bottle. And you sort of like looked surprised. And um, because you hadn't mentioned anything about Klein bottles or topology up until that point. So um, I guess that's, that's what uh, really uh, created that spark me and why I find your work so compelling and why your interview with um, Stephen was so interesting and why I, I had been reading Stephen's book actually um, and um, he came up in our conversation and then you were walking down the street with your with John your husband right and that was the day you were leaving and I was standing there on the street corner and I was all dressed in the back and I was waving at you guys and y'all both looked like I you were looking at someone who was crazy until you got closer to me and then you knew who I was. But, and then that's when I asked you, I said, oh, by the way, you have a novel, right? You wanted me to read that and you pulled it out of your bag. And so um, that was like the, the perfect way for us, I think, to, um, to, to, to sort of reconnect after that workshop. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so how would you answer the question, how can we speak from um, whatever words you want to put there, the depth dimension, from integral awareness, um, from non-duality? Well, I... And Dan, I put this question to you too. No, Doug, Doug, I'm sorry. <laughs> Names don't matter at this point, so. <laughs> well, I'm very drawn to, meta, to metaphor. Um, it seems to me to be the, um, the, the most effective way of communicating um, from non-ordinary states of consciousness uh, or altered states or alternate ways of knowing. Um, metaphor is, is extremely helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think there's something about uh, the dynamics of a metaphor. It's, it's like a mapping across from one thing to another thing. And there's something in between um, that, uh, that you want to map across. And there may be a lot of stuff that unintentionally gets in the way. So every metaphor is never perfect. It always conceals something as much as, every, as it reveals. So our metaphors are necessary, but they're not sufficient because uh, you need more metaphors. And I think when the metaphor gets tired, we need to, you know, get, we need to put it aside. And I believe you, you speak of the war metaphor, and I think we're all pretty sick and tired of that one. The war on drugs, the war on poverty, the war on whatever. Um, I think that um, we just need to find new ways 
Um, and I don't know that we're, I think we can do this as individuals pretty well. I mean, there are excellent examples of people who do um, come up with wonderful, innovative ideas and they use metaphors often to do that. But it's really hard, I think, for us to do it collectively. Um, I, and I'm, that's part of my inspiration is the proprioception of groups. How can we come up with our own metaphor and allow others to come up with their metaphor? And so once we make that transparent, then there, are, there is, I believe, um, an opportunity to come from the integral rather than to be, you know, just talking about it um, and, and, and allowing it to get more and more abstract. Um, I think this is something Stephen said too about abstraction and, and, and the concrete. And, um, and that so, inter- Yes, So the, the cameraman has a question or a few questions, but- Please, please. Um, Are we recording by the way? We are at this point, and I wanted to do some maybe grounding before it gets too abstract. Okay. So how, how long uh, do both of you have to uh, manage this call? Well, I, I, have, I have up to two hours. It's uh, about 20 minutes into the two hours. So I would I say about know. an hour and a half. Is that okay with you, Lisa? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Okay. And then... Um, your fireworks, are they able to be silent as well? And, um, but I, I'm, I'm recently diving into the, the realm of the Quaker. I don't know if you're familiar with Quaker beliefs or practices, but um, my, one of the my first- My college was- Oh, yeah, I, I missed that name. I'm, I'm relatively new. It's been less than a year, um, but I'm now co-clerking the, the meeting here and- um, Lexington, Kentucky. So I have quite a bit to learn, but they've definitely taken me in. Uh, I see them as my, my elders. Um, so great. Yeah, I, I feel we can kind of ground ourselves, at least if we want to branch out into that collective or some triangular form, then it would be nice to have kind of that chance to have space in between what we're saying so we're not stepping over each other. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, al I also wanted to mention um, your vocabulary, fu, an, gu, that's a word from your mm -hmm. novel. Mu, ishe, wa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ane, mi, onu. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> I don't know where they well, came where from. Where they come they from? They just popped into my head. <laughs> That's so creative. Okay. Um, so, Doug, in case you haven't gotten to that part of the book yet, um, these are... Yeah. Do, do you have them in front of you that you could put up to the camera? John? I could probably, um, are they in, do you know what page they're on? So I, I do have a Kindle book, uh, so I could do a search, <laughs> but I don't know if. There they're, you go, excellent. Yes, that is Muishiwa. That is Muishiwa. And what is, oh, I have, these are a little bigger. Can you see yeah. that? Yes. And this one? Looks like a fractal snowflake of some sort. Yeah. Um, fo, fo angu. This is Fo Angu. This is Mu Ishiwa. And this is Akra Na, the union of the material and the divine. And there, there are the definitions here. But I think this is so interesting. Because um, I am. Um, I don't, I don't know where I put it, but I had a, a, a symbol that came in one of my dreams and I, um, I, I put it down. It's sort of like a bell shape with a line and a, 
the circle and the circle was divided halfway um, by that line. I'd have to show you the drawing, but it was just gave me a really weird feeling um, that I was sort of starting to channel these, my own like private language. But if you show it to someone else, it's not private anymore. <laughs> you know? So I think this is maybe part of this uh, uh, working with coming from the integral um, would be to me being very comfortable with those liminal zones, um, those where the, you know, that Mobius strip uh, flips um, and, or in the Klein bottle um, where you sort of turn upside down. So, mm -hmm. and um, so with all of that as sort of background, um, maybe we could do some clean language and I can ask you some clean language questions. And then we could, um, okay. I'm going to ask, uh, ask a few questions. And then I'm going to ask each of you to make a map that makes sense to you. And then we can share our maps. And we can ask a few more questions. Okay. Okay. So that's the plan. Okay. Um, and then we could um, sort of brainstorm about if there are any connections um, between this clean language and symbolic modeling and and perhaps what you're you're developing because I, I think there is sort of a family resemblance. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So it, before we start, is there anything you want to ask me about um, clean language? Either one of you, Doug, if you, I know you've done this, you, you and I've done this before, Doug, but if there's any questions you want to ask, feel free. No, let's just dive in. Okay. Um, so we, what is the resource that we want to work on? Do we have something that, um, that you'd like to develop further? Like, um, I'm thinking of, uh, listening at your best or we have done writing. We can do that again. Um, communicating at your best, collaborating at your best. Creating, um, creating. From the creating from the nothingness. Creating from the nothingness. Yeah. Okay. This is something new. Creating from the nothingness. At your best. At your best. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, not just your, um, at the, What's the way to say, you know, at the best for everybody? Collective. At the best for the universe. At the best for all of us. Um, I think we need to, to keep, keep it succinct. Um, it's the word collective. Okay. Well, I was thinking when you're creating from nothing at your best, that's like what? How does that feel or sound or, or look like? Is that a good one? Or do you want to modify it or change it? And we were going to develop that a little bit. Could you repeat it one more time? Yeah. When you're creating, or we could just say when you're creating at your best. Would that be okay, Lisa? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and who wants to go first? Do you want to go first, Lisa? We're done. Um, it looks like the, the sprouting of a seed. Ah, the sprouting of a seed. And it looks like a sprouting of a seed. And when sprouting of a seed, is there anything else about that seed? When creating. It knows it's holding the flower and the fruit within it. 
it knows it's holding the flower and the fruit within it yeah and it knows it's holding the flower and the fruit within it and when it knows it's holding the flower and the fruit within it whereabouts is that seed in the field and yeah. not like a physical field but you know like like a field in physics a, a field in physics yeah yeah like field dynamics in, in the field it's it's in the betweenness and in the field and fit like in physics in the betweenness and when it's in the betweenness is there a size or a shape when it is in the field in the betweenness no no and when or the it's it's uh it's two-sided it's it's no and it's it's infinite so it's, you know there's no there's no uh size like you know this cup has uh height width and depth it's it's everywhere every when and the cup has That's height width and depth and the seed in the field, in the between, in the in between, two sided. Is there no, no, no? It's it's infinite. It's infinite. infinite. No, no, no. It's infinite. <laughs> and when no, no, no. It's infinite. <laughs> Is there anything else about no, no, no? <laughs> That's my response. <laughs> and when no, 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 and that's your response. No, no, that's my response was the ha, ha, ha. And the ha, and the laugh, that's your response. What happens to seeds that knows it is holding the flower and fruit within it. It's free to become. It's free to become. And when it's free to become, then what happens? Flowers and fruits and more seeds. Flowers and fruits and more seeds and when flowers and fruits and more seeds and free to become whereabouts is that free when free to become does that free have a size or a shape It's the size and shape of the Big Bang. Oh. The yeah, I told you we'd get to fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> the, the size and the shape of the Big Bang. And when it's the size and the shape of the Big Bang, what happens to looks like sprouting a seed. 
Is there a relationship between that Big Bang and looks like sprouting a seed? They're one and the same. They're one and the same. And is that a good time to pause? Yeah, I think so. Great. So can you make a map of, how, you know, a map that makes sense of this for you? <coughs> and I'm going to, and while you're making your map, I'm going to be working with Doug. Got some tea going through it. Okay. I have to go run and find a piece of paper. Okay. Take it. Take your time. I'm going to be working with Doug while you do your map. Are okay. you ready, Doug? I am ready. Hold on just a second. Okay. Okay. And when you're creating at your best, that's like what? So I guess we originally grounded it in a nothingness, or at least Lisa did, and well, we changed what? that. We changed it actually. Yes. So it's so, when you're creating at your best, that's like what? So I, I'm feeling singular or alone. Feeling singular and alone. Spacious. Spacious. And when feeling singular and alone, and spacious. Is there anything else about spacious? There's, there is that, that. There's an urgency, but also the spaciousness allows for a sort of lack of time, a realm with no time. A lack of time? A, a chance to observe. A realm with no time? A chance to observe? And when a realm, a lack of time, and a chance to observe, whereabouts observe? There is a central point and once once the the create creativity begins to flow, the point can be sprouting off or jumping even into any given location. And when creating begins to flow, the central point is jumping. And when 
creating begins to flow. What happens right before creating begins to flow? There, there is a revelatory spark. There is a, an unknown, though it's also known as if it's been there, an unknown drive, perhaps. In a revelatory spark and an unknown drive, perhaps. And is there anything else about that revelatory spark? Does that revelatory spark have a size or a shape? It has... It has a... Yeah, the size or shape, I'm not coming, it's not coming into play, but I feel there's partners, perhaps. Partner? Whether, like a muse that's guiding me. And feel partners or a muse that is guiding me. And when feels partners or a muse is guiding me, whereabouts is me when feels guided by a muse? So the me will be still be at that point, and then when guided, it can be a childlike muse that's running at full speed, wanting to show you the, the creative spark, the light at the end of the tunnel. And we must rush there or, or it can be kind of an all, all sensing, an all knowing feeling that's, that's given by an unknown entity, perhaps older or slower. An older or slower entity and rush, a childlike muse, rush to the light at the end of the tunnel. And when childlike muse, is there anything else about that childlike muse? Is there a size or a shape? Say in in the the kind of infinite realm, I can't imagine anything, but I, I see myself within that space, but I will be maybe pacing around the room. And there'll be a book in hand and I'll be there'll be multiple thoughts flowing into my my noggin. And multiple thoughts flowing into your noggin. And when multiple thoughts flowing into your noggin, whereabouts flow into your noggin? Does that flow have a size or a shape when entering your noggin? It does. It's entering right now. And it's a, a soft, gentle, consistent, constant flow. A soft, gentle, constant flow. And whereabouts in your head is that soft, gentle, constant flow? Okay. It's, it's flowing in the forehead and... Uh, on both sides here. So. And it's flowing in the forehead and on both sides. And then what happens? There's a another another form forming above, kind of orb-shaped or 
or a, a ball. Another form, forming above, orb shape. And is there anything else about that? Orb shape, above? I feel it can be shared. And that, that's the, the voice, maybe, unspoken voice. And you feel it can be shared. And an unspoken voice. And when you feel it can be shared, and an unspoken voice, what happens to flow around the forehead? It begins to enter the other. It begins to enter the other. And when it begins to enter the other, then what happens? Brightness. Brightness. And when enter the other and brightness, is there a relationship between that brightness and that orb above? Uh, it it can be simply just a moving object, or it can be viewed as maybe like playing catch, <laughs> maybe. A moving object, playing catch. Playing maybe. catch with, with light. Playing catch with light. And then what happens to childlike muse? See, it's all around now. <laughs> it's all around? It's not necessarily an, uh, a human type entity or a child. It's, uh, it's just being itself potentially or, or existence. Eh? Maybe that's the same thing. And when childlike muse and it's no longer human or not human, and enter the other and brightness and the orb playing catch and flowing around the head and guiding me. And with all of that, what happens to feeling singular and alone? It's a shared aloneness now. Ah. A shared aloneness. And is there anything else about shared aloneness? It, it, it takes in both the the playful light elements and and any any darkness as well that might be looming about or underfoot it, it, it takes in the playful light and, and the darkness and when it takes in the playful light and in the dark and the darkness whereabouts takes in When it takes in, whereabouts takes in? It's flowing through my chest now. Ah, and whereabouts flowing into your chest? Whereabouts in your chest? Right in the middle, the sternum area, I suppose. Yeah right in the middle in the sternum area when it is in the middle in the sternum area does it have a size or a shape no or it's a flowing a flowing okay thank you and is it 
okay if I, if we pause there? I'd appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> great. So uh, if you make a map of, of this, mm -hmm. making sense to you, um, I'll go and work with Lisa, okay? Lisa, so did you get a map? Yeah, I have a map. Okay, um, let's see, can you see it? Uh, can you hold it back a little bit? It's a little hard to see, a little closer. Okay, why don't I start from the bottom since that's where the seed is? Okay, I see the seed. Okay. Yes. And I see the seed. It looks like okay. you have more than one seed there. Well, uh, then there's the flower. Oh, yes. yes. I can see it now. Okay. And then there's, oh, there's the flower. Uh huh. Okay. And then uh, there's the fruiting. The fruiting. Okay, and then these are these are the seeds returning back down to the nothingness. And the seeds returning back down to the nothingness. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's the whole process. It's the whole process. And this the, is actually the concept of fu an gu. Ah, in a way. Fu an gu. Yeah. And is there anything else about that relationship between the flower and the seeds returning back down to nothing and fu an gu? Um, it's the parts and the whole simultaneously. And the parts and the holes simultaneously. Whole with the W. Whole. It's the parts and the whole simultaneously. Yeah. And is there anything else about that map? Um, it's... It's an infinite loop. An infinite loop. And what are you most drawn to in that in that map? Um, the the seating is is kind of like the fireworks. The seating is like the fireworks? Yeah. And is there anything else about that? Seating that's like the fireworks? What happens to the match? Hmm. Um, it never goes out. Uh -huh. And the match never goes out. And, and then what happens, and when it never goes out, then what happens to Fu on Gu? Um, well, there's, 
Okay, by saying what happens to Fuan Gu, it's like you're putting Fuan Gu out there as an object when it's not an object, it's the whole process. And so basically what happens is Fuan Gu, Fuan Gu's. It, 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 it's, um, it's this process um, being itself. And it is not an object. It is a process being itself. Yeah. And it's parts and whole simultaneously. And an infinite loop. Is there anything else about that infinite loop? Um. Well, you can sit within it, or you can pretend to look at it from outside. But if, if you do that, you'll never see the whole. Thank you. And when you're creating at your best, what environments are you in when you are creating at your best that allow you to create at your best? I'm with other matches. Other matches. And when you are creating at your best, what, what prevents you from creating? What environment prevents you from creating at your best? Um, when, when there's not enough of, of something, not enough air, not enough water, not enough dirt. Not enough air, not enough water, not enough dirt. And that, and that sound you made, hmm. You made that sound, I can't, hmm. You remember it? Yeah. Where does that hmm come from? Inside. <laughs> Whereabouts inside? Uh, about right here. Uh huh. It, so it, somewhere it, between the heart and the throat. Between the heart and the throat. And when from inside, between the heart and the throat, is there anything else about that? Uh, 
that needs to be open for uh -huh. um, creating, how did we phrase it? Creating at your best. Yeah. yeah. And when needs to be opened, can that happen? Say that again. And when in the heart and in the chest, and it needs to be opened. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? The creating is easy. Ah. And the creating is easy. And when creating is easy, then what happens? Um, there's joy. Ah, and there's joy. You should say, I feel joy. Ah, and I feel joy. And when I feel joy, what kind of I is that I when I feel joy? Open, exuberant, um, connected. Open, exuberant, connected. And when open, exuberant, connected, that's like what? Fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And fireworks. I, I think we've come, we're in a loop now. We're right. in a loop. <laughs> we're in the loop. Is this a good time to pause? I think so. Thank you. And now we're going to go to Thank Doug. You. We'll go to Doug. Okay. He'll show us his map, and then we'll have uh, a brainstorm, okay? We'll have more fireworks. Okay, Doug. All right. Can you show us your map? Show and tell? Let's I think see. that's what we need to do. Didn't Lynn Claire say that? We need to bring back into the school show and tell? Yeah. And I think that's when we know we're coming from the integral. We can show and tell our own maps. Okay, okay Doug. Okay. Now, Doug, is there any way to make you be the center person with in, in the middle where the screen is big? When, when we edit it, it, it will when it edits. Oh, okay. I'm just yeah. it thinking will, about the way it looks it. now. Oh. The way. Yeah, I'm I have the, to get close. Can you show gotcha. us? All right, so. There it is. So there, okay. Trying to get the right lighting here. Okay, we see it, I see it. Yeah. Okay, I believe this area here is the central point, which uh -huh. developed into a person by the end of our first uh, session there. And there, there's kind of a, a nothingness, a, an aloneness to that point. And then there's the, the insight or the, the spark and it can become 
well, I guess the child's over here. So that's the fast kind of in quick, intuitive, creative spark. There's my uh, the elder kind of guiding me by the hand slowly. And then at some point the, the ball formed. Uh, I wrote visions above. I don't know if I said that originally, but that this, this circular thing formed and that's kind of the vision, which I, that, that just sort of happened when I was doodling. I think I was listening to Lisa talk and uh, that, that vision formed there. Um, this is the, the field. So the orb kind of goes around and it can go to objects or it, it's kind of a, a glowing ball of light that can go across the world. It can go anywhere at any point in time. And then at times it'll meet the other. So there's the other. Uh -huh. And I, I think that was the, the uh, sternum feeling. So it's just kind of a flowing feeling all around. And, and the sternum feeling flowing all around. And then the, the child, and that's fast, that's faster, the child? Yes, I and, don't have to show that on the picture. And the elder, by the, guiding by the hand slowly, and the ball, and the visions, and the orb goes around objects and glowing. And with all of that, what are you most drawn to? I, li I like the, uh, the ability of the orb to move on its own or, or to be located at any point. The ability of the orb to move on its own and to be located at any point? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Um, so now I'd sort of like to do like an open frame. I, um, uh, one question I could ask is, um, what if you learned anything? If there's something that you learned from this um, clean language exercise that you'd like to share? I like, and I if like the you learned about the other. That's also yeah. a useful thing to explore. So the I I'm a amateur gardener, so I always enjoy seed references and um so that, that resonated with me. I at one point the I described the spot in my head in the central area back here as just the tiniest of seeds and it's just a, a point that can sprout off into the everything, the, the anything. And I feel that's where you were coming from. I, I, I wasn't fully listening to you while I was drawing. So it's like, a, um, yeah. right, when you were describing your drawing and going further, but uh, yeah, I felt it. <laughs> so you were listening to Lisa describe her drawing and you had a response to that. Is that right? Uh, and I, it may have influenced my drawing, but. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Lisa, did you learn something from this exercise that you'd like to share? Um, I got a. I, a renewed feeling of hope. Um, I, you know, doing it, I tapped into that feeling of joy. Um, which is wonderful because I can't say I've felt that much lately. <laughs> 
Um, and it was interesting uh, listening to, to Doug describe what to me sounded like our innate telepathic abilities. Uh-huh. Is there anything else about that innate telepathic abilities? Uh, just that there's, there's always energy flowing um, amongst us. And he just characterized it so well. Thank you. Well, I learned an awful lot. Um, it's very hard to put into words. Um, but I felt that um, what, what popped out for me when, when I was listening to your interview with Stephen and also with Lynn, um, this idea of a proprioception and exploring the observer and um, this sort of indeterminate nature of the subject object. There's, mm -hmm. it becomes a, a much more of a flow than it is a, a rigid, a, a, a boundary. And, um, and I think the pleasure for me, the aesthetics of the relationships becomes what this work to me is all about because I start to um, feel influenced um, by the imagery and the feelings that are emerging, especially when there's, um, you know, feelings of joy and feelings of, um, you know, brightness and, and guides uh, assisting us either slowly or, or quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a, a mutual influence where I feel like I'm a, a membrane that's vibrating. Um, so I think those are sort of examples of what I imagine coming from integral and an integral awareness. Uh, I, I believe we, we've been demonstrating that. Um, I, I imagine that our left and right hemispheres are, while we're doing this process, are much more are functioning much more collaboratively than competitively. And I believe that's the, 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 the enjoyment that I receive is when I feel that people are working at these, at the depth level. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of genius in everybody, which is almost always absent <laughs> when they're not at that depth level. <laughs> and I think that's when we, how could we, um, I guess a, a desired outcome for me would be how could we become more and more comfortable with, uh, you know, what would be considered the consensus reality we could consider this kind of odd if we were all just sort of tuning into the flow and the telepathic rapport and just images were flowing and we were being able to communicate both verbally and non-verbally from these depth dimensions. At one point, and I did, I hesitated. This is part of my learning experience. You, you made that noise, that sound. And I thought, hmm. But then I started, I kept saying, I'm curious about where that comes from. <laughs> and that was very, something started to uh, develop. So, yeah. we're, so we're developing here. These are all sort of developing questions. I'm asking about size and shape and quality and whereabouts is that and, you know, looking for a location in the perceptual space. And then I'm, then I'm looking for relationships and then I'm looking for the element of time. Once we get a resource and starts to develop, what happens before that? What happens after? And then what happens after that? So I, I believe it's a, a, a great um, learning curve for me because I believe we're all starting to, uh, learn about time and space and mm -hmm. how to model that. So that's my improv. Uh, I, I, I'm sure I could uh, sit down and my left brain could help me if I wanted to, um, to, to develop this further. Um, but I think now we have a lot more material to work with. So thank you all very much. I think this is a wonderful opportunity. Here we are. I'm in uh, New York and Doug, you're in Kentucky and and you're in Carmel, right? 
Carmel, yeah. California. Yeah. Let me let me turn the light on. It's the sun went down and it's dark. <laughs> yeah. So So I'm just responding to this um, miracle that we can use this technology. This is one of the themes that we've been talking about, Doug, in the, in the cafe. There, let there be light. Mm. There we go. Yeah, that was the, the first thing I noticed for me, um, which I've mentioned, mentioned to many people um, on the Cosmos Collective website that for me to speak in general, that that's uh, literally been less than a year progress of actually sharing my thoughts outside of my own spouse and my child. And my, I consider the rest of my family is kind of borderline. I don't completely share everything I'd wish, but um, this technology here is really surprisingly um, opened up the connection that I knew was out there. Um, here in Kentucky, don't necessarily find that. I've described my gun-toting, rebel flag-waving neighbors, which I have grown to enjoy um, for the people that they are outside of their objects, <laughs> if you want to phrase it that way. But um, they're, they're just like any of us. And, um, but I, I much prefer to interact with like-minded people to explore a realm such as the realms we just explored, whether complete or not, or vague, or just a, a seed or a spark. Um, it's a great grounding point and great starting point. And maybe that's a question I have. I don't know where you want to take this right now, John, but based go, on- Go, go everywhere, any um, way you want. I mean, this is an open frame now, so we can have a free- so, so I'm wondering if there was any plan talk for, uh, is it this coming Tuesday when when you'll be coming to the, the Cosmos Cafe, Lisa? Um, I think that's what we're here to uh, kind of shape today, gotcha. right? So Am I yes, yes. Okay. We can Is shape it, that now. Yeah. So, so what support do you need or help do you need? Uh, or what, what questions do you have for us? Or how can we do that? Um, Basically, uh, you know, I, I can talk about all kinds of different things, um, depending on what you all are interested in, you know, help me, um, help me steer what I have to say in the directions that you're interested in. I'd rather talk about something that you and your group well, I than something, you know, like that I feel like, oh, I want to. I want to beat this drum. I don't, I don't need to beat any particular drum. Well, we're going to, Marco said that he's read your, uh, the, the Rosen essay. Okay. And I also said that you were thinking about writing something else or finishing something else. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, something it's new? coming, but it's not quite there yet. Okay. Um, basically it's the, the talk that I gave in New York where we met. Oh yeah. The, the not, I, the not that, Hamani. I still have the notes. Yeah. The Hamani, yeah. That was great. I found that on YouTube, by the way. Did you, you see did? it? Yeah, no. I'll send you the link. Yeah. Oh my God. I wrote I wrote to Jeremy and I wrote to Sabrina. I'm like, uh, is they it didn't up? Respond? They didn't respond? I'll, I'll send it to you. It was a big chunk of the uh, several presentations on uh it's like a two or three hour and you're one you're you're the last segment okay so i'll send you the link and i'll um time it put the time in when it begins great thank you yeah so i think that would be great and i love the the non commodity text it's beautiful yeah yeah and it um i think it really gives us a way to um, step into what does integral consciousness um, look like in non-integral language. I, I have a question about uh, the for, this, this moving as we did in this exercise from um, a third 
dimension to the second, uh, the two dimensions of the, the map. But I'm wondering, Lisa, and mm -hmm. I need a little help with this. I think we're moving from a fourth dimension. We're in these imaginal spaces. I'm not sure, but I think there's something about when we try to put a, make a map that makes sense, um, and we're working with 2D, but I think there's elements of, of 3D and 4D because um, the language you know, game that we're playing here with the, the perceptual space and locating um, our language and taking those abstractions and making them more concrete uh, and creating relationships. I have a funny feeling that there's more going on there than just 3D and 2D. What's your intuition about that? Um, if, if you have a feeling that there's more going on, then I think you are tapped into the more that's going on. There might be somebody, uh, you know, let's just say uh, an imaginary person sitting next to me here that um, might go, no, you guys are just talking over, you know, the internet. There's, what, what do you mean more going on? You, he said this, she said that. And, and the, there wouldn't be you know, this feeling of something coalescing among the three of us here, which is the seed for the coalescing of, you know, the, the cafe on Tuesday. Right. Um, where, you know, our, our minds and our hearts are, are starting to um, cohere. Right. Right. So it's it's the me that is we. Yeah. It's starting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, and, and it, it helps to have um, you know interest in in these same sorts of things in topology, in philosophy, in um, you know to to have that kind of shared. Um, uh, orientation. You know, we're oriented to there's something being deeper than just, hey, you know, let's have a beer and watch the football game. Right, right. Yeah, and when you were reading that text of the Nag Hammadi and, um, and the fluidity of the, of the genders and, um, mm -hmm. you know, the that was, and it was it's so dreamlike in that you were, you were suggesting that these were actually for a performance. So these were, people were inducing themselves into probably trance-like states. And um, I just think that's really... Hang on, do you, do you have a meeting in here? I do. do okay, so I will... Have to go? Um, I'm just gonna go relocate. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm in a shared space here. <laughs> I have to be here There's for... A little library downstairs in the corner down there? That's... that's yeah. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one. I, I sometimes do that. Okay. Um, sorry about this, guys. No problem. Fortunately, the technology is such that I can just walk down with my computer and we won't experience an interruption. <laughs> That's great. So, so Doug, help us out. What do you think she should do? Have you, I, I think we need to, any of the essays we it Sounds should. like, it sounds like she should go downstairs. No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Um, so. We'll read something that you've written, Lisa. Just let us know which one you want us to read. Which one do you think would resonate with the group? Well, I, I know the the one 
the Nagamani that you're talking about that everyone besides me, I think, has read in depth and Gebser that tend to frequent the cafe. So they'd be familiar with whatever you happen to throw out there. And that might be a good starting point. And I know everyone would be willing to work with you uh, to help develop what you're working on. Okay, thank you. Are you okay, Lisa? Um, yeah, <laughs> fortunately, I don't think there was much tea left in my cup. Oh, no. Here's a... Okay. A little chaos here. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to get out of their way. So let me tell you a little bit about the space I'm in. This is, uh, it's called McGowan House. And our local fr Monterey Friends of C.G. Jung meets here. Um, it was built as a retreat center for a, a group of theosophists from Pasadena. And um, it hosts uh, a bunch of AA groups and NA and, you know, all sorts of recovery groups, as well as a Zen meditation group. And it's just a really, really wonderful place for people to gather. So now I am down in the, the library, our Friends of You library. And I think, I think we're good. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I think we have about five minutes left. So what we used to do is we read an article or an essay, mm -hmm. uh, and then we talk, we discuss it. And um, I think last time we had a film, a filmmaker, we all watched the film and we talked to the filmmaker, Jordan Brown. And uh, sometimes, uh, I had an essay and everyone read it and I did a little clean language process and we talked. So it's a very, uh, a lot of people know Gebser um, pretty well. M many of us were on a reading, uh, we had a reading circle and we did that text uh, two years ago, I think. And we're working on Globes now, Schlotterdijk, his, his trilogy. And we're going to be doing uh, life divine in the summer. So these are the kind of things we like to read. And um, so I thought you would be perfect because your stuff with the topology and um, language and both of those essays are, are, are manageable. Uh, I think we could read both of them. That's what Marco said. Um, okay, great, wow. And then, and then you could go um, in any direction that you want. Cause I just want to provide a good uh, you know, listening space, we'll listen, and then we can share, talk, respond. We do, we worked with Sam Tennant's, uh The Hebrew Alphabet. Do you know Sam Tennant's work? <laughs> yes, you do know. Okay. So uh, our, our colleague, Ed, he's um, really into that. And also, he's into um, Lynn Clare, Dennis, um, and um, Kaufman's work, so well, we, we so really got into topology. I, I have to, I have, can I just share a really great story about all of that? Sure. For several years, I was part of a group in Chicago that met on Monday nights at the home of Hector Sibeli, who was a um, retired psychiatrist and pharmacologist and um, he wrote a book called Union of Opposites. And when I was writing my book, I, I went back to Union of Opposites and thought, you know, where, I mean, this guy's local, he's in Chicago, I, I should find him. So by this time, the internet had been invented. And so I Googled Hector Sibeli. And it turns out he lived a mile away from me. Wow. And uh, I got his phone number 
or his email, I think email, and uh, said, you know, hey, I'm really interested in the, your ideas. And he said, well, you know, we meet every Monday night. Why don't you come? Okay. At those meetings was Lou Kaufman. Wow. Uh, Lou, Lou helped Hector with the map for his, his theories about bios. And um, uh, Lou, Lou and I, I, I really admire Lou because he is um, kind of a renaissance man. You know, he could talk about anything from uh, math to physics to Eastern philosophy to Western philosophy to yoga. I mean, his wife's a yoga instructor. And music, he plays the clarinet. And it's like, my God, what, what doesn't this guy know? Yeah, he's, he's the one who told me about Stan Tennant's work. Oh, okay. So, so anyhow, um, fast forward. I move out of Chicago. Um, I'm here in Carmel, poking around the internet, going, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't tapped into the chimatics literature lately let me go see what's happening with chimatics um and i end up on this website that has this really funky looking topological shape and i'm like oh my god wow i had to tell lou about this but i thought you know i better do some due diligence you know this might be just you know some artist rendition you know kind of hoaxy whatever I'm going to dig a little deeper. So I dug a little deeper and there was a link to a book. And I get to the link on Amazon and Lou's name is on the book. I'm like, oh. <laughs> is it Was it the Marion book? It was the Marion Matrix. Wow. That's the one I'm reading now. Yeah. It's, 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 it's wild and difficult. Um, so, I don't tend to understand it, but it's... It, but it isn't because it isn't well written. It's just very difficult. It, yeah. It's just really difficult, but it's beautifully written. Yeah. So after that, um, I something in me said, I have to interview Lynn Clare. Uh -huh. And I, I just wrote to her out of the blue and said, you know, will you do this? And she said, yes. And uh, ever since then, we've just, we've developed a great friendship. I'm going to, I'm going to go visit her in Spain next month. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I loved her ideas on education. I just think that's just pure genius, what she's coming up with. Um, it, it's, it is. Um, I've worked with her on a grant to try to get that system in fact, they've developed, they've brought it kind of up to date. They realize that today's kids don't really resonate with sky kids and dolphin kids and tree kids. And, you know, now it's got to be like uh, the, the light bearer, you know, like with the lightsaber and Star Wars. And they, it, has a, it has a little more, they have a more up to date imagery for it. Um, called the the belonging project mm -hmm. and uh so we've been trying to get some grant money to basically institute it you know somewhere here in the u.s so i think those are uh, any of that you want to develop or talk about your projects or talk about your interests i mean i'm interested in the fourth dimension the imaginal and lucid dreaming and how all, and how all this relates to language is deeply fascinating. And I think most of the people on there are, you know, interested in topology and consciousness and Gebser. So um, I'm sure you'll just fit right in. So I hope we've been helpful for you. If you have oh. any, if something comes up between now and then you want to talk, feel free to, you know, contact me and we will. Okay. And if Let's you want start with the Gebser. Let's start with the Gebser article. Okay, great. Um, and then um, move into the the Rosen article because I think um, 
what I really want to get to is uh, the need to develop new language. Yes. And, and what all that entails. And the opaque language and the transparent language. And how are we going to go from opaque to the transparent? Um, yeah, yeah, because that's, that's a big question. Right. Um, I don't, I don't know how, but, uh, there's a whole bunch of... I think it's possible. I think it's possible. The transparent will become apparent when the time <laughs> comes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think that's a great direction. So, Doug, do, how should she do this? Should she, how does so, she articles? We, you, since we don't have the... Gebser article, and it sounds like it might still be in rough draft or update um, form. But could people watch that video? That yes, I can post send it. Out the, the, the video with, uh, you know, here's the time. So anything you need to send to John, whether paper or video link, you can send that to him and he'll send that to me. And then I can make one of the cafe pages, I suppose, or work with Marcos to get it all together. Hopefully we can have this. I, I'm new to uploading long uh, videos to YouTube. So uh, I'll uh, see if my computer can handle over an hour video. I, I know processing, the processing speed I'm talking about. Um, so hopefully we'll have this as a supplement as well for well, whoever's I can, going. I can do that. I can uh, upload the, the YouTube video. All you have to do is put a link. Yeah. Put a link to the YouTube video. I'm talking about this video that's occurring right now. This oh, recording. Oh, okay. oh, I thought you were talking about... Oh. oh. But that's besides the point. So, yeah, once we get it all together, we'll hopefully have it all on one cafe page. Uh, oh, you can, you can upload this video to, to YouTube. But correct. you don't know how long that will take. Oh, correct. okay. That I got just it. a side comment there. Um, and someday I'm going to need a tutorial from you. Maybe you can walk me through how to do this. So now that right. you know, you seem like you know what you're doing. I'm, I'm really glad you were here. I feel very supportive. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to work with the both of you as uh, whatever type of cameraman I said, the participatory cameraman. So I enjoy that role. <laughs> yeah. So this is the plan. You're going to send me, I'll send you that link to Gebser Society on YouTube and um, I'll send it to Doug also. And you'll send to me any material you want us to read. And so you'll do that as soon as you can. So everyone will have a chance because it's on Tuesday, right? This is uh, Wednesday. Correct. So, but those are short pieces. So it should be, those are manageable. So we could read them by Tuesday. Because okay. this is a very okay. ambitious group. They love to read. So, yes. Good. And a couple other notes, which maybe John, or you've already figured out, Lisa, um, the cafe is at one o'clock mountain time. Yeah. So that would be noon your time, I believe. Mm -hmm. Just to get, um, so you understand that. And then also the, on, on the conversations website, I don't know if you've been to Inf infinite conversations, but uh, there probably will be a discussion that starts to form once we set that up in the next day or two. So if you want to check in and maybe add a co few comments there, that, that'll that kind of maybe also ground us as to where everybody else wants to start. Uh, okay. And, yeah. and you're, you're registered, so you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can just give us a, you know, shape it however way you want to. Do you have a username, Lisa? I do, I can't remember what it is at the moment. <laughs> I guess we'll find you one word. Um, I, I think it's probably just, you know, like Lisa M or something like that. Okay. Okay. Does Mar Marco usually uh, does the setups for that, doesn't he, Doug? Yes. And then we yes. All add, each of us can edit it any way we want to. We can add things to the, yeah. But I think we should do that soon in the next day or so, don't you think? We so can we get can that talk, together. Yeah, yeah, so we can start some dialoguing prior. Sounds good. Cool. I like it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I had a great time. Me too. A lot of fun. It's we'll been do a it pleasure. Again. We'll do it again real soon. Okay. Thumbs up.
Good evening. Good night. Good evening. Sweet dreams, everybody. Thank you, Doug. Thank you.